Hello and welcome to Backspacer 57's channel and our first mod spotlight for Minecraft 1.10.2. So as you can see, we're in a brand new redstone testing world and we're here with Tinker's Construct. Tinker's Construct is updated to 1.10.2. It's one of the first mods to do so and it is looking great. So um, I know a lot of people have probably already seen Tinker's Construct. It's, you know, it's probably one of the most common mods in mod packs. Uh, however, MDOs and Bonus are really keeping it up to date. It's a, keeping track with uh, Minecraft's update history and it's in 1.10.2 right now. So what's changed and what's there? Well, for the people who are new to Tinker's Construct or new to mods in general, Tinker's Construct comes with um, a custom crafting, crafting station, a tool station, a part builder, and a stencil table. Now, traditionally, usually the early game also has your chest and pattern chest tied to the crafting station and the part builder. So you, if you can access your chest from your crafting station and you can access your part builder or not your part, your your pattern chest from your part crafter. There you go. Now, new additions since 1.7.10 and added in some a couple of new features. Well, first of all, if we go ahead and craft ourselves a pickaxe, you can see everything on the crafting table right there. That's a new feature and that's added in. It's really cool. You can also see it on the tool station. As well as, surprise, surprise, the part builder. Now, the interfaces, you can also see it on the stencil table. Now, the interfaces are slightly different as well. It's still the same old, exact same crafting station, tool station, part crafter, uh, the part chest is new, pattern chest, and stencil table. However, if you look at the pattern chest, if I get it clicked right, can see that there's all these individual spots. Well, as I add to the pattern chest, and I could go ahead and grab a pattern chest here. Uh, there we go. I'm going to show you the part chest in just a minute. So right here, I have new, brand new pattern chest, and I'm going to. I want to chuck my broad axe head pattern in. Well, there's only one spot. Well, what use is that to me? Boom. New spot. Now, if I go over here and I take this broad X pattern and I try and put it in this one, they don't communicate with each other. It doesn't go in. It only allows one pattern of each type in a, in a pattern chest. Now, for those of you out there who have multiple of each pattern, uh, like some dungeons used to, this is going to be kind of a pain. However, for those of you out there who like to have one of each pattern in every chest, I'm a little bit picky. This is going to be great, and it works awesome. I'm using it in a 1.10 pack that I've made for myself personally, and it's amazing. So, what's new? The part chest here. The part chest is totally brand new. So we can load this up with parts, and it holds, if we look at the description, uh, here it, is. it holds a lot of parts. <laughs> That's literally the description. So what kind of parts does it hold? Well, this one, it holds just about anything and it stacks parts, which is great. So for all those extra parts that we have laying around in our chests, you can throw that in your part chest. And the great thing about the part chest is it's accessible from your part builder. So what else is different about the interface? Well, if you haven't noticed, there's tabs at the top here and we can get to everything just by clicking one part of the station. So we can get to our, cra our crafting station, we get to our tool station, our part builder. The only caveat here is they don't connect through chests. And I'm not sure if they connect through the pattern chest or the part chest, but they don't connect through regular chests. So everything has to be in a row like this. So I like organizing my stuff like now, this now. Technically the chest can be out here, and I believe the part builder and the part or the pattern chest and the part chest can be underneath. But yeah, <laughs> that's that. So for those new players here to Tinker's Construct, as you progress, you go through, 
smooth wooden and stone tools on these um this set of stations so if i were to come over here i would get myself a tool, a tool rod yeah well, we're gonna need a whole bunch of tool rods so a whole bunch of sticks are coming out i just got 64 of those plop them in there so there's a tool rod a stick and we can throw in Head. And so with that, we can go over to our tool station and we can hit boom, 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 boom. So there's our stone pickaxe. And there we go. Uh, right. And so that gives us our stone pickaxe. So the stone pickaxe is really kind of, you know, mundane. It's whatever. Um, there's a couple other changes into crafting recipes as well. Now you need a tool binding for your shovel and your hatchet. Um, the Mad Act only still needs the, the hatchet head and the shovel head. And there's not way too much other change in this. Um, it's just that, really. It's useful, though, because it makes sense that you need a binding to keep your shovel head on and your a little bit more sensible now it's a little bit more cost intensive also as you noticed with the um part builder here if i go and grab my fix here it uh it gives you a material value of wood and so this is how much wood i have here it's 30.5 so and then it tells you how much the material cost is for each pattern so if it's shovel head it costs me two that cost me two the tool rod only cost me one a sign plate pattern cost me three so it's a little bit more cut and dry how much we need so it, it makes it a lot easier to go out and find materials it's a lot more intuitive than just throwing things in there and seeing how much you need um or going to the wiki um everything is in game now so you don't have to go outside the game um so there's another new add-on here so if we go over to the part builder you can notice there's this thing, which is the, the sharpening kit. So if we grab a sharpening kit, we can see where does the sharpening kit go? Yep, yeah, okay, so it's here. So if we grab ourselves a sharpening kit, we can I don't know, let's go with uh, steel. So we combine with a flint. So we go ahead and grab ourselves a flint. So we have one flint. Grab our pickaxe. Throw our pickaxe in. So now we have our stone pickaxe. We throw our sharpening kit in. So that's a steel sharpening kit that upgrades us to the materials tools mining level. And that gives us another stone pickaxe. Wow. Would you look at that? However, the mining level is now obsidian. And its mining speed is slightly different. But um, if I were to pop over into here, you can see that this exists. Um, but if we were to go ahead and grab ourselves a block. Obsidian. That's what we're looking for. So we go ahead and grab that, and then we head back over to survival mode. Now mine this. And it's gonna take forever. But I can mine it with a stone pickaxe now. Now, what is the use of this? You'll probably get thinking. Why do I care? Yep. See, I can pick it up. Why do I care? Is Probably what you should be asking and what any sane individual wants to know. Well, because now I have a obsidian mineable or a, an obsidian mining pickaxe that's stone and I can repair it with stone. Awesome. So it makes really cheap pickaxes available to us. Now, it, the practicality of it is not that great. The practicality of it kind of sucks because it's still slow 
it still takes forever to mine obsidian. However, it did before, and if we're going to be doing a lot of mining of things that we don't necessarily need to, to worry too much of, it makes it convenient for us. And we can also take an iron pickaxe, for example, and modify it so it mines at a much higher level as well. So that really works for any pickaxe. Now, the natural progression for, from Tinker's Construct is these wooden stone tools at this tool station to the smeltery. And then from the smeltery, we can go ahead and we can grab ourselves a tool forge. Uh, the tool forge is this part right here. We'll just grab ourselves some iron ore. And that's going to be the most accessible one to the average player. So that opens up new materials and tools to us. Uh, shurikens, broadswords, cleavers, lumber axes, kind of like the rest of the Tinker's game. Really, the Tinker's end game. So, how do I make a smeltery? Well, a smeltery is made by putting your seared stone bricks in a square formation. And I have some down here. Let's grab them. The requirements of a smeltery is you have to have one block sunken, one block here, one block here, block here, block here, and that's a smeltery. Now, how am I going to get anything out of the smeltery? Well, this block, change it to that. So what is all of this? Well, your smeltery controller controls things in the smeltery. So you can drop a block here and it smelts and it becomes liquid. If we were to go ahead and grab some, uh, let's see, what would be good to grab? Iron ore would be good to grab here as well. Gold ore too. And we'll need a bucket of lava. So if we were to go over here, we can dump our lava in our seared tank. We can go ahead and dump our gold ore in, and it'll smelt. And it'll smelt slowly. And the same thing applies to here. We can go ahead and we can dump a single gold ore. Now, as you can see, we only have one space available in this smeltery. And yet we have 9, 18, 27 available in this smeltery. So the smeltery capacity is determined by how many spaces are available inside. Now you don't have to have these fancy corny blocks here. And you'll notice if you're an old Tinker's Construct player, that there's additional options to smelt or to pour on, on, add faucets onto the smeltery drain. The smeltery drain is how we get things out of this smeltery. And if this is smelted here, it's two ingots. So you can see we can bring it out there or we can start pouring it into this casting table or this casting basin for whatever reason this is not going to work out. No, it might, it might just be because there's not oh there's nothing in there never mind and we can put it into casts now casts are unique in tinker's construct in that we need a gold cast to make the ingot cast for anything else. So let's see. Here we go. Ah. So to make an ingot cast, we'd have to put that there. And then we could then we have ourselves a casting. We have ourselves a, a way to get ingots on. Sorry. Turning over my words a little bit. So as you can see now we have gold ingots. If we wanted gold blocks, we would have to use a casting basin it appears as casting table and on the ground but whatever and then that would give us gold blocks the material cost is the same for a block as it would be to craft it on a table so you need nine ingots worth of gold to make a block however as you notice i put one block of gold ore in here and i got two gold ingots out tinker's construct doubles the amount of gold we get when we use the smeltery. So this makes a more efficient way of getting gold, which is very, very, very good. Um, and it's excellent. How, how, um, how useful is this? This is extraordinarily useful because there's casts for everything. There's casts for broad axes, tool rods, um, cross guard casts, sharpening kits, gear casts, everything. So you, 
put your cast in here, you put your smelt your metal of choice, and you can smelt ingots or um or ores, doesn't matter, and you, you get your material back out. Now, there's another useful thing. Let me reset this. One, two, three. Uh, there's another useful thing about these smelteries. And I can grab some tools. And I can grab this chain chest plate. And you can see. Is this not? Is this not this? I don't think it is. Uh, all right. So chain's not good. The gold is. Yeah, here we go. We can smelt this golden chest plate. And that will become ore again. So things that we find off of mob drops, we can repair, because usually damage. We can throw it into the smeltery, and then we can get materials out of it. So if you're getting a lot of gold chest plate or iron chest plate drops from mobs, you can repair all that, and you can throw it in the smeltery, and then you can get your gold, you can get your material back. You don't have to wear it, you don't have to stockpile it, you don't have to throw it away. You can actually get stuff out of it. You can recycle, basically. And it gives you the um, the customary amount back. And we can see that we can pour into a casting basin here. And it's going to use quite a bit. I think it's going to be a block short. Yeah, it's a block short. So that's kind of the, the rundown on Tinkers. Now, how for the players who have played Tinkers before, how do I automate this? 10, 10 point, 1.10 is new to a lot of mod makers. And how do, is this useful to me as a mod still? And for those of you who are new to Tinker's Construct, we used to be able to um, automate Tinker's um, systems by using um, extra utilities. By, and we could hook a redstone clock to this, and we could pour into it the casting table automatically. We wouldn't have to be here to go like this, and then hit it again once this is gone. Um, so how do I do that is the question. Well, the answer is quite easy. So the first thing that we can do is pretty much this is already used widely as it is. So I'm going to grab a chest. Of these anymore. I'm gonna grab a chest. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna place it. And boom. There we go. We have ourselves a an automated um, an automated casting table. So what happens with this is once this fully smelts, whenever we cast anything, it'll be automatically pulled out by the hopper and put into the oak chest. Now, that's very useful because then we can, we don't have to worry about hit, grab, hit, grab, hit, grab. But how do I get the rest of it? How do I get the rest of it automated? How do I automate clicking on this? Well, Tinker's construct responds to, um, responds to redstone quite well. So we're gonna come out here. We're gonna give ourselves an area Space. And I don't think we're gonna need all of that clay, but let's see here. And we need to give ourselves a sticky piston there. And a sticky piston there. Oh, look at that. We might need right. And then we need a block of heart and clay. A block of heart and clay. I need some redstone. And this is, I believe, Impulse SV Opera Clock Design. And for those of you who are familiar with automating redstone, I can go ahead and I can stick in six blocks. And I can grab a comparator, comparator, and boom. And as you can see, it switches back and forth. And then I can go here. And you can see it automatically collects up, connects up to there. And this is still smelting. Oh, we need more space. So we're gonna need to pop that guy there. And there we go. So there we go. We have more space. Here. And 
There we go. We have some one black worth of molten gold. There we go. Let's throw an ingot cast in. Is that not working? Is that working? There we go. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so that's the gist of what you have to do to automate this. And you throw that on a hopper clock, and it's not going to sound as nice. I'll give you that. We can even throw it into a repeater, and we can. And grab the smelting table. Throw it there. And we can have two going at once. So that's how we get it done. And then we can have that smelting table run into that hopper. So go grab that. That's all we have to do. So now how do I automate things going into this? Well, I just stick a hopper on the smeltery controller and say I have a chest. Oh, there's my chest. All right. And then I don't need to do this anymore. And then I can just grab a bunch of Smack it all in there. You have a funnel through into the hopper, into the smeltery. It'll be smelted, and then it'll come out into the casting table. Only thing I have to manually do is throw lava into the secret tank. And I can do that very easily and creative just by filling it up. However, there's a more useful way to do this. Uh, for those of you in survival, you can grab a seared tank, and you can put four buckets of lava and then you can take that seared tank, and you can, uh, where's, where's a good pickaxe? We'll use the cobalt pickaxe. And we can upgrade our game mode to survival. And as you can see, I have the seared tank in my inventory. It uh, has lava in it, and it retains liquid when broken. So then I can run all the way up the stairs, boom, Throw my lava in. I don't have any more lava, so I could just go and throw into that tank. I can throw into that tank. Throw it into that tank. Pick up my tank and go grab more lava. And in the meantime, everything. Oh no, my. In the meantime, everything here is running just the way it was um, before. And it's making me ingots. See, I have a whole bunch of ingots. Uh, looks like I'm getting a decent lot of uh, redstone. And there we go. And there we go. So, once I have things smelted, I could go over here. I'm just gonna, for the sake of showing you things, I'm just gonna grab parts. Gold. Well, gold is not a great metal to do it out of anyway. The good metals to do it out of would be cobalt or vanillium. Those are the two strongest metals. In the world. However, they're also the hardest to find. So we grab say, that. Throw to the left. Grab vanillium to the right. Throw that into there. And that gives us a cobalt pickaxe. So the pickaxe is whatever it is on top. That's what it's going to be called. So if the pickaxe head is cobalt, then the whole pickaxe is cobalt. And then cold-blooded is the modifier. Uh, it's a mining level cobalt, which is one of the highest levels in the game. And it has a high durability and a pretty high mining speed of 12. And an attack speed of 5, or attack damage of 5.1. So it is doing great. That's exactly what we want to see. 
um, this is an excellent pickaxe. If we're to switch over into survival, see it's just as good, if not a little bit better, than a diamond pickaxe. And that's that's awesome. So that's really all you have to know about Tinker's Construct. Uh, that's a 25 minute video. Uh, if you like, please subscribe if you, or leave a like or both, preferably both. And leave a comment down below if you'd like to see another mod. This is from my personal mod pack. So if you'd like to see more of that, I'll be posting some more in the future. Uh, I have a couple of mods like Journey Map in it and a few other things. Well, that's fine. Uh, the hopper clock, just for as a quick note, if you put six blocks in here, every time it shifts from there to there, it'll pulse it once, so it'll draw something out, which is really neat. But yeah, other than that, uh, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, this is one of my first videos in a long time, uh, so feedback is welcome. And uh, have a nice day.